It's a big week down at the fairgrounds and maybe even a bigger one in New Orleans. Mardi Gras upon us, as is the Kentucky Derby Championship Series. 50 points to the winner in the Risen Star. And I am pleased to be joined by Fairgrounds Publicity, Simulcast, Handicapper, all around Bon Vivant, Kevin Kilroy. Kevin, big week. What's up, Ed? Thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, it's a big week. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, great. it's crazy when it all lines up with the Mardi Gras stuff here. This, this town just goes nuts, you know? <laughs> uh, maybe we got the Endymion Parade on Saturday and uh, just all the other stuff that's rolling throughout Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Uh, but we're all horse here, you know, forget 13 parades. post parades on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. They should do a little something for those, you know, they should do a little, uh, little, little pull, you know, a little, little, little yeah, uh, that would little, be, little, hmm. like that, you know, get on that for uh, next year. HRN will do a float. Oh yeah. Wait a minute. You should do one for the fairground stakes. You guys are sponsoring that, right? That's right. Well, we're yeah. presenting, presenting it, presenting it. Yeah. We could get our, uh, our paper mache out out and uh do a little logo and uh you could be the king of the of the deal before we get to the risen star 14 three-year-old males very exciting 50 points to the winner but the highest regarded three-year-old onto the road to the derby at least based on the wagering this past weekend in the future wager is in the rachel alexandra speaking of course about who's your philly and i'm bringing her up not only because of the star power but i've seen your tweets i've seen the fairgrounds nola tweets a lot of excitement with her working back. She's had only three before her three-year-old debut. Wonder Wheel and Julia Shining were disappointing this past weekend. Is she going to be more like them, or is she going to live up to the hype? Yeah, I mean, you just never know, right, when they when they turn the, the calendar year and start that three-year-old um, season. You know, talking to Tom this week and talking to him, you know, every week about about this field. It says that uh, she doesn't need more than three to, to get going and get ready. You know, she's just got such a, um, an impressive high speed cruising ability that she just kind of gets out there and rolls. So, uh, gave her three works and bullet, bullet, bullet. Right. And, you know, I watched him back and, you know, watched him live and she just moves it so easy at first. You're like, oh, that's not going to be, a, you know, a fast time. And then you look and boom, she, she gets it. So she's moving well in the morning. I think, I think all, uh, all indications that she's going to run well, right? It's a tough field. There's only six fillies in there, but it's a tough field. Um, she's three for three as her two-year-old, you know, and uh, yeah, bet down to 11 to one in the uh, the Derby Future Pool, uh, which is the third choice in there behind all others and Fort and uh, and her. Um, she made it look easy as a two-year-old, and uh, she should have an easy setup in terms of finding a clean trip with just six fillies in there, which will, will be good. And if she can get rolling in our long stretch, uh, which is a good setup for her, then she sh she should be dangerous. You know, Chop Chop's in there. I think she's still a live runner to, to pay attention to. But Hoosier Philly's looking good in the mornings, going fast. Edgar Morales has been up for all of those, you know, her rider. And uh, he knows her well. So uh, Tom's feeling good about her, but also just moderating expectations after he, he built them up so high. Remember, uh, <laughs> you know, best, best horse ever and all that sort of stuff, which, uh, you know, or most talented or whatever he was saying. So I think he's just trying to, trying to, you know, set the expectations that she's got to prove it now. And uh, this is her chance. Right. Yeah. It's, and it's only $600 uh, to nominate to the triple crown, but anytime it's a Phillies name on the nomination slip, that certainly gets people talking and the hype train rolling. So Tom, you know, definitely having to juggle that very much looking forward to seeing her three-year-old debut and chop chop. Some may remember, uh, and I was there on breeders cup day, uh, the, the buzz that had built around her going into that race. Like, I mean, you would have thought she was transfigured between her last race and the breeders cup, the way people were talking about her. And, and I forget if she actually was favored or close to it, yeah. but she took a lot of betting and didn't do much running, but uh, clearly they think she's talented and uh, we're going to get a throwdown right off the rip here in the Rachel Alexandra. Yeah. It's going to be a serious throwdown. Yeah. She uh, finished last in there and uh, had a really tough trip. You know, that was, that was not the way to, to run around the Keeneland course and, being so wide there coming in the turn, but yeah, finished last. She looked good uh, coming back there in the silver bullet day, but uh, the alleys look just able to pull away from her. So uh, Brad's putting the blinkers on and hoping that helps her finish um, and uh, to pass any, any rivals there at the end. So I think she's the one, if you do want to go against Hoosier Philly, I think she's the one, um, but I could go on about those Phillies. I've been, been watching them all, but chop, chop, 
does seem she was fit yeah. for that last one. I don't think she needed it. So um, I think the blinkers could make a difference here. All right. And we will uh, see uh, on that 13 race card, which concludes with the risen star. And I think fair to say Hoosier Philly would have been the favorite had they, uh, which I understand why they didn't go that route. Nine furlongs as opposed to eight and a half off the bench. First time males. I'm not by any means suggesting she should be in the risen star, but I do think she would be favored as we saw in that future pool. Instead, we get a really evenly matched group of 14 for now. Victory formation, the favorite from that powerful Cox barn. I do think he's the most likely winner, Kevin, but when I see 14 in a gate, I really want to go hunting for bigger game than three to one. Yeah, I think he should. We've got five pace setters in here. You know, we've got one of the outside there uh, with uh, private creed, assuming that's the way that turf sprinter, you know, beers cup turf sprinter goes. Then we've got, uh, you know, on the inside, we've got determinedly we've got Harlow cap transferred from the Bob Baffert barn to Steve Asmussen's barn. I think he just arrived um, last night, if not uh, Sunday night. And then you've, uh, who's my other pace setter in here? Silver Heist has definitely showed some speed, but I think that was more the pace circumstance last time. Um, bah, 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 bah. Oh, yeah, Shaq Diesel. Shaq Diesel's been uh, been uh, <laughs> going fast early there. So Adam Biscuits has got a little bit of runner there, that 30 to 1 morning line. So, you know, that's the way to go for victory formation. Brad says, you know, it's not a need the lead type of situation at all. He's just going to let uh, Flavian figure out where to uh, where to position after the break. And, um, you know, last time in the Smarty Jones had that wide draw of the eight and was able to get to the lead and, you know, be sharp from the gate. So, but I do think it's going to set up for, for a closer's kick, at, you know, even just on our two turn races, we've just seen a lot of late kickers ever since, you know, the end of December. So I think that's the, the way to, to play the track, you know, really to take advantage of that fact that it's a long stretch and look for, for a late runner. And um, yeah, you want to go for a price in here. It's, it's, you know, I mean, Curly Jack, it, it would be a big step forward. I think yeah, he needs, he's been well, but uh, I think it's, it's one of these he, he needs to get going on his three-year-old career. Determinedly, really took advantage of that slow pace, slowed him up big time last time. And uh, Tappet's Conquest was just a little bit too green still to, to pass that runner on the inside, talking to Flo about that ride. He was like, ah, oh, he was just – he's still learning. But once he did get by, he got really proud of himself. And uh, Flo was even saying that maybe Tappet's Conquest thought he won that race after he galloped out past <laughs> determinedly. Um, single ruler, big time closer, but that was a great pace setup for that runner for DeSormo last time. Silver Heist hasn't impressed me too much. Uh, Sun Thunder, Ken McPeak saying it's a test. It's going to be a big step up. Um, you know, I, Tappet's Conquest is the one for me in here. If, if you've been watching those works, I mean, it's just been, uh, it's been impressive. Uh, that last time out, they were uh, set behind the wall set. So the wall set had pretty mischievous in it. And Tappet's Conquest ran that, uh, that Philly down who's, you know, in the uh, um, Rachel Alexandra for the Walsh barn, ran her down before the finish line and then galloped out all the way halfway through the second turn. He's a, he's a big runner who's a stepping forward. And that's the one that I'm, I'm really looking to bet in this race. Um, in terms of getting the distance, yeah, that is the big question. You know, Angel of Empire, the other Cox horse should be able to get it for sure. Tapas Conquest, 100% mm -hmm. uh, will be able to get it. Uh, but that's the big question in here. Determinately is one that I don't think um, we'll be able to get the distance. You'll be able to hold on there if, if going at a high speed. Um, I think that might be more of a you know a one turn mile sort of sort of horse um, and uh, victory formation. I think there's another question mark on that one too. All right. Uh, well, it's uh, certainly an exciting way to close out an already exciting card. And then uh, this will be my first time in New Orleans for the actual Mardi Gras celebration. So I'm hoping. Uh, let's see. What do we got for a post time? 6 14 p.m so i'm going to be very willing to help you guys get out of there so i can have a, a mardi gras docent with me in uh, the crescent city you'll have a good time we'll pop over to uh to la party see and demian roll down uh canal um big old parade and you're going to be blown away it's it, it, you, do you like catching uh frisbees and beads and uh, all sorts of glowy glowy balls and stuff like that because they're gonna be in the uh, uh, frisbees you gotta die for I'll catch you a ball. You gotta fight some kids too. There's lots of kids uh, just uh, getting aggressive <laughs> out there. So it's like foul balls at a game. <laughs> it is. It is. Or t-shirts. You know, kid. Yeah, all stakes pick five. You know, I think it's gonna be a good one to play. What do you think? Single? Who's your Philly? Man, I don't know. 
I guess. Well, nice okay. Let me rephrase that. I hate to say not single her because it's not like I'm going to go deep and use her. But if I don't single her, I could make a case for maybe Chop Chop is the single then. Yeah, I think I think Chop Chop, you know, Baba has just been looking beautiful, just so healthy, dappled out and moving well. That could be sneaky. Um, yeah, I think I'll have a couple tickets. You know, when I'm singling uh, Tappet's Conquest, I'll probably use uh, Baba and uh, and Chop Chop. But um, otherwise, uh, you know, spread a little bit. You know who my single is anyway. Oh, gosh, yes. Tis the bomb. Absolutely. <laughs> Back yep. on the turf. And working got well. the rail, so, we're rolling. Yeah, yeah, it's it's been all right. The turf course has been playing fair, so any any spot you can you can win on. So I know for a while there was all about those outside trips, but any spot can work out right, right now. On that yeah, it seemed to move in a little bit, so that that's good for Tis the Bomb on the on the pine uh, in the uh, fairgrounds presented by Horse Racing Nation. That kicks off in all graded stakes pick three, middle leg of the all stakes pick five. Risen Star closes us out. Going to be a great weekend. Can't wait to be there. Yeah, Ed, get your, get yourself down here. Let's get some food and let's have a good time. All right. That's the plan. That's what Fairgrounds is all about. Food, good time, good bets. We're going to make it happen this weekend. Good luck, everybody.